then it's speaking to me and saying this meeting is being recorded. All right, so uh, continuing on here after that internet disruption, uh, we've got this integral here to do. And so we just start going through and doing it, right? So we've got the pi we can bring out in front, integral from one to four, we can square this thing out. What does that give us? X, what is this? It's gonna be X minus two square root X plus one DX. And so then that is just a bunch of polynomials that you can integrate. So I'm not gonna do that for you. It's good practice for you, uh, but you will integrate that polynomial, not difficult, plug in one and four, and you should get seven pi over six. All right, so try to finish that one off just for practice. If you, you know, making sure you're meticulous. But there you go, there's that one. Any questions on that one? That one makes sense. If you notice our radius equation is essentially, if you wanna think of this another way, we did that square root of x minus one. That's just f of x minus one. That's just a vertical shift downward of our graph, right? <clears throat> what I mean to say is if we took square root of x and we shifted it down by one and then just rotated it around the x-axis, in other words, we said we just used y equals square root of x minus one, wouldn't we get the same result for the same volume from one to four, right? If we revolved it around the x-axis like that. So you notice that's all we essentially did. We just shifted it down, whichever way you prefer to think of it as. Right? Just a vertical shift of our graph. Okay? Um, I like to think of it the way I did it, where I think about what the total square root is. My internet connection is unstable. Okay. Well, we'll keep going doing our best here. Now let's take a look at this. Volume by disks for rotation about the y-axis. So now, instead of revolving it like vertically around the x-axis, we're gonna revolve it around the y-axis. Good news is, it's not really any more difficult. It's the same basic idea. You find what the radius is gonna be and you just go through and do it. So let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> we just go through it, but notice now, uh, our radius is a function of y. Because if you see like in this picture here, the radius is now out this way and it's whatever value of y we give it into that. So we're just switching it from a function of x to a function of y and then doing the same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region between the y-axis and the curve of x equals two over y. So it's nice of them, they already gave it to us as x is a function of y, uh, from one to four about the y-axis. So we do the same sort of thing. You can see what kind of a shape it's gonna make, almost like a cone shape or a, what is that game? Sorry, kind of looks like one of those to me, right? Didn't it have pieces that look like that? Huh? Yeah, I'm not crazy, right? Okay, so our limits of integration are gonna be from one to four. We want to do pi times our radius squared, but this time our radius is a function of y and then dy. So we we'll go through and do this. Uh, our radius at any point is just going to be from the y-axis out to where we get 2 over y, right? So this becomes integral from 1 to 4 pi times two over y squared dy, which is just pi one to four, four over y squared dy, which is just pi one to four, uh, four, no, we can bring the four out front, four pi and make this y to the negative two dy. Go through make it y to the negative one over negative one, 
and then you know you get your negative four pi uh, one over y like that from one to four and negative four pi plug in one fourth minus one over one and negative four pi times one fourth minus one is going to be negative three fourths negative three fourths the fours will cancel the negatives will cancel and we'll get three pi What do we think? Any questions on that thing? Two more problems to do here. No questions on that? Still writing anybody? Good? Okay, let's take a look then the next idea. So this is solids of revolution, the washer method. To me, this washer method is really just the same method. You're just like doing it twice and subtracting the middle. So I'm not sure. I mean, it gets a special name because it looks like a washer instead of a circle, but You'll see what I'm talking about. So let's say we're looking at this here and we want the volume enclosed by those two graphs revolved around the x-axis. Now, if we went back a page and we did this one, we revolved it around, we had the two functions, but we revolved it around, essentially we revolved it around one of the functions, right? We revolved it around y equals one. But in this one, we're revolving it around the x-axis, so see what it does? It puts a hole in the middle, okay? Right? So the way I look at this one is I think of it the exact same way. I'm gonna do a revolving of the top one and get its volume, and then I'm gonna revolve the bottom one, get its volume, and subtract it off, right? And that's essentially what this method does. If you're doing this, it looks very similar to that one we did on the previous page where we integrated it uh, or when we where we shifted it by one, right? We still want pi times the radius squared. We just want it twice. We want pi, let's call, oh, they have it here, r of x squared dx minus integral a to b pi little r of x squared dx, right? That's the little r of x. So the, the inner one, the outer one. And we can just shorten that down into integral from a to b, pi times r of x squared minus little r of x squared dx. And I don't really care which of those two versions you prefer, they will produce the same thing. I tend to think of it more like the first one. If you like thinking of it the second way, that's fine as well. But notice it is slightly different than the one we did where we revolved it around y equals one, right? When we revolved it around y equals one, it was, you know, that would have been more like, more like uh, r of x minus one, and then that whole thing was squared, not each individual one squared. You see that difference? Okay, All right? So that's our difference there between those two, All right? That we shifted it or subtracted it off and it was inside the square. This one, they're each done on their own because you're essentially finding one and then cutting the middle out. Figure out what the volume of that cut out in the middle is and take it out. All right, any questions on that? 
so we should try one. Example nine. All right, the region bounded by the curve x squared plus one and the line negative x plus three is revolved around the x-axis to generate a solid, find the volume of the solid. So first thing we wanna do is sketch this thing out so we know what we're dealing with. Here is our y-axis, here is our x-axis and we have the graph x squared plus one. What does that look like? A parabola, where does it go through the y-axis? Good. So at y equals one, we've got this parabola like that. Now we have the graph negative x plus three. What kind of a graph is that? Nice straight line. Is it positive slope, negative slope, negative slope? What's its y-intercept? three. So we have one, two, three. And so we have this thing coming through something like that, right? I don't care what it does after that. Okay. So something like that. So the region we're looking at to ultimately rotate around is this one right in here, correct? We're looking at that in between them. And then we're going to revolve this around the x-axis. So, so what we are going to do is revolve this all the way around the x-axis, which means we will end up with down here at negative one, negative three. We're going to have this thing going like this, this thing going like this, right? And we're going to end up with some kind of shape like that in the middle there, right? As it revolves around and gives us some kind of hollowed out cone looking thing, right? Like a, on the inside, it's like a, the inside of an hourglass. On the outside, it's like a just flat edged cone. Like a volcano. I've never seen a volcano shape like that. <laughs> Maybe while they're exploding, but then it, but it's doing that on the out on the top. I guess it's flat out here. I guess on the inside it's doing that, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll go with it. Volcano. All right. So we need to figure out uh, what we're going to do here. So we're result we're revolving it around the x-axis, and so we have two functions here. We have y equals x squared plus one, and we have y equals negative x plus three, and we're going around the x-axis. First off, what are our limits of integration? Where are we going from? So how do we find that? Good. Limits of integration. We're going to do uh, x squared plus one equals negative x plus three, which is x squared plus x minus two. And does that factor? I hope so, since I'm putting that down already. What's it factor? Good. So that means we have two solutions, x equals negative two and positive one. So those are our limits of integration, right? So this, if you come straight down here, dot, 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 this is one, and this is negative two. So now we have our limits of integration. So let's do our volume. So our volume is gonna be this integral from negative two out to one. We need pi, and then we need to do the top one. So essentially, we're going to find that volume of the outer one, right? Which would be like a, like a, a like a, what are those? Those plateau type. It'd be like a this kind of a shape, right? Like one of those, a cone kind of a shape. That's the outer one. 
And which one is that? Which one is the top one? Which function? Huh? Is the parabola the top one? The line, which is, what was it? Negative x plus three? Negative x plus three squared. So that right there is the volume of the outer part. Now we have to subtract off this inner volume doing that with the parabolas, right? We're taking out that big, huge middle chunk of it. And so that big, huge middle chunk of it is the parabola, which was what? X squared plus one. So minus X squared plus one, that's the inner parabola. And we need to make those into little cylinders instead of just areas. So we end up with a volume, D so times DX, right? That's area times height. DX is the height. The other part is the circular areas. So now I just have to actually do this integral. So let's square this thing out equals bring that pi out in front from negative two to one. This is going to be x squared minus six x plus nine minus x to the fourth two x squared plus one, all right, dx. And now it's a nice polynomial. You can distribute that negative sign. You can go through the several lines of doing that. Again, I'm going to leave this one uh, to go ahead for you to try right now. And you should ultimately get, I think I wrote that down, I don't know. Did I write that down right? Uh, 117 pi over five is what I came up with. Don't forget to add the pi or an e, whichever. Just kidding, don't add an e. All right. I'll come back to this in a second here, I guess. Well, let me look at this. I can look right here. What is it? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this right here, or at least pause.